from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the land of Laverne and Shirley at Cincinnati Bearcat basketball. Tonight from the Bradley Center, the Cats take on the Golden Eagles of Marquette. A very pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dan Horde, and welcome to Bearcat basketball here on Fox 19. With six games left in the regular season, the Bearcats are still in first place in Conference USA, but after losing at DePaul last Saturday, their lead is shrinking. Cincinnati just one game ahead of UNC Charlotte. The Cats and Niners will meet one week from tonight at the Shoe. We'll have it for you here on Fox 19. Working with me, as always, former UC Captain Anthony Buford. The DePaul game was obviously a disaster, but let's take a look at a positive aspect from that game, the play of Ryan Fletcher. Well, Ryan Fletcher has been a bright spot for University of Cincinnati ever since he went to the bench, and he really had the ice waters going against DePaul as he put up major league numbers in overtime, scoring all 11 points, showing that depth touch that he has from the outside and displaying some back-to-the-basket moves, giving UC Good scoring in the low post, which they will need going into the tournament and also into the conference tournament. Gives them a guy who can score in the post, and that's sorely needed by the Bearcats. Turning to tonight's opponent, Marquette, the Golden Eagles come into the game 11 and 12. It's a young team, only one senior on the roster, Mike Bargain. Well, Mike Bargain has been just that, a bargain. Leads this team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and block shots. How about that, block shots? The only guy in Conference USA in the top 10 in block shots and three-point shooting. So he's coming off a great game against Louisville, getting his career high at 25. He's playing well. Will be tough tonight. The Cats are coming off a bad game. It's been four years since they've lost two in a row. I do avoid that tonight here at Marquette. Stay tuned. The starting lineups are up next on Fox 19. Back to the Bradley Center where the Bearcats and Golden Eagles meet for the second time this season. Cincinnati won the first meeting, but Marquette has managed to beat the Bearcats in each of the last three seasons. Looking at our A.E. door sales starting lineups, we start with the Bearcats. Well, Pete Michael highlighted, got 14 points uh, against these same Warriors, excuse me, uh, Golden Eagles last time, and he'll look to put, put it on the floor and get back to playing where he was playing before uh, the DePaul game. And the Bearcats, of course, coached by Bob Huggins in his 10th year at UC, looking for his 242nd win as the head coach of the Bearcats. Now turning to the Golden Eagles, 11 and 12 overall, three Conference USA. Well, the Golden Eagles will look to slow the game down and keep the score low. Uh, again, Brian Wardle, another guy you got to watch out for, Mike Bargain, those guys have carried this team and will will surely put it on the line tonight. Mike Dean's in his fifth year as Marquette's head coach, known as one of the better X's and O's guys in Conference USA. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the start of tonight's game on Fox 19. And here at the Bradley Center, Cincinnati has won five and lost two. In their first meeting this year, Cincinnati won by 19, 75-56. Dominated the inside play in that ball game, and Pete Michael had a good game. He had five steals, as high as a Bearcat. Well, Pete Michael really anticipated the lanes and played great defense in that game, and that's where he picked up his career high in steals. But the Bearcats, on a whole, they controlled the tempo, even though it was a... They, they, they got out to a fast start, even though they didn't score as many points as they wanted to. That's going to be key for them is to speed this game up because Marquette will surely try and play to their tempo, which will be a low, a low scoring game. And for folks who have forgotten about that first ball game, that was the game that was delayed by one day as Marquette was stuck in a blizzard, unable to get to Cincinnati. Moved from a Sunday night to a Monday night. Jermaine Tate will jump for Cincinnati. John Miller for Marquette. And we are underway as Tate wins the tap, getting it to Pete Michael. The Bearcats begin the game with the ball. Cincinnati in its road black. Marquette in its home white. Well, Marquette right now looks like they're playing a man. Actually, they're playing a box in one. Nope, they've shifted into a man-to-man -man zone and tried to disguise it early. Bearcats. Michael Horton takes it right to the goal and scores. Well, that's what you got to do. You got it penetration to, to make the defense change so you can see what type of defense they're playing. Bargain fakes the three, drives into the paint, 
and he scores. Mike Bargan ties the game at two, and Marquette will go to full court pressure. And the pressure is, is meant to slow the Bearcats down, try and contain them. They don't want to speed this game up. Bargain doing a great job of going with the head fake. One knows he's a very good outside shooter and use that head fake to score. Tate double teamed in the low post, gets off the shot and scores. Jermaine Tate, who hasn't done much offensively since becoming eligible, gives Cincinnati a 4-2 lead. Well, he's capable of making that shot, a jump, jump hook shot. He can score in the post. It looks like he's a little bit more determined to put up some numbers down in, the, in that block. Bearcats have an advantage down there. Michael Horton just took a shot to the face. Cordell Henry has a shot, and a foul will be called on Mel Levin. Michael Horton took a shot to the face. He appears to be okay. Well, Michael got in the way of big fella's elbows, and that's the worst thing about being a guard is you, you get a look at, at the foul right there from Mel Levitt. Got him, got him on the arm. A little ticky-tack early. But the biggest thing about being, being six foot is your head is about right where <laughs> Six eight guys elbows are <laughs> five foot nine Cordell Henry at the line his first free throw no good he is a freshman from Chicago he was a high school teammate of DePaul star Quentin Richardson's and his second free throw is good Cincinnati leads four three there's a steal by Mike Bargain whose pass is stolen by Mel Levin Kenyon Martin shoots Tate with the offensive rebound Tate is hollow says he was fouled no whistle and bargain gets the rebound for Marquette and Tate has an argument right there he was smacked on the wrist as he was attempting that shot officials letting him play it looks like down low and that eventually will work out to UC's advantage Cordell Henry guarded in this switch by Pete Michael there's a steal for Horton Horton goes to the goal and he's fouled by Namaka Aloma Namaka from Sweden picking up his first foul. Well, Horton doing a great job of anticipating the pass. What he did was let his man cut through. He and Mel Levitt communicated. Mel Levitt picked up his guy, and he switched. As you see, Bargain picks off that pass right there. Bearcats tried to hurry it up, and Mel Levitt then anticipates and steals, the, steals it back for the Cats. Horton at the line. He's only made 49% of his free throws this season. He barely draws iron on his first night. Well, they say relax at the free throw line and just knock him in, and I think he almost fell asleep on that one. <laughs> Short armed it. The second one's a bit too strong, and the big guy, John Miller, has the rebound. Wardle guarded by Levin. Now it's Namaka. Kenyon Martin doing a good job defensively forcing Namaka out. Kenyon with the deflection. Levitt with the steal. Turnover number three for Marquette. Kenyon Martin shoots. Does not get the roll, and Namaka has the rebound. Not much offensive rebounding early for UC. Good blocking out by Marquette. Nice use of fundamentals. Bearcats trapped the, the double. They put the trap on Bargain, but Pete called for the foul, his first. The Bearcats will do that. They will trap the pick and roll. As you see, Kenyon steps out, and they get it. They get Pete Michael on the reach in. Off the inbound, Cordell Henry fired up a quick three-pointer that was no good. You see with the ball, and a foul against Namaka, his second. Well, Namaka got caught two hands in the back as the ball was going being entered into the post now we get pushed and that's an easy call for the official Mike Dean wants a quick timeout probably in part to get Namaka out of the ball game since he pick, he's picked up two fouls in the first three minutes and that's a good that's a good timeout he's got to get his guys settled the Bearcats on the attack right now on the offensive end and he's he's going to get someone else in go over a little bit of strategy right here in, in the uh, huddle Try and settle his guys down. Looking for a personal milestone tonight. He enters this game three points shy of 1,000. He'll become the 37th member of the 1,000 point club at UC. 
The next person to pass on the list, David Puffy Kennedy, who finished with 1,002 career points. Still has a ways to go to catch Oscar. Bearcats so far shooting 40%. Melvin comes off the pick and drills the jumper. So with his next point in this game, he'll have 1,000 for his career. Well, Mel Levitt's probably out to prove something. He felt pretty bad after that last ball game. Six foot 11, John Miller scores inside. It's a one point ball game. The Bearcats lead 6-5. That's what you got to do to a shot blocker. Shot. John Miller just attacked the basket and, and he forced Kenya to back off on the block attempt. Bad pass by Pete Michael, deflected by Bargain and picked off by Marquette. The Golden Eagles have a chance to take the lead. Miller rejected by Tate, but Jermaine is called for his first foul. And Ryan Fletcher will check into the ball game. Marquette catching the Bearcats off guard, pushing the basketball down the court as no one picked up. Mueller and he gets in and attacks the basket, draws the foul on tape. Bearcats not getting back defensively early in this game. Miller's free throw is up and it rolls in. Three early points for John Miller, who averages fewer than two a game. Fletch is in. Fletch has been outstanding coming off the bench, averaging 12 points as a sub. He was only averaging four as a starter. Miller hits both free throws. Greg Clawson will come in, and John Miller will take a blow. Well, Miller is doing a good job while he's in the game, running the floor, stretching UC's defense, and getting, getting out, getting some easy baskets. Now they come back with Clawson, who's a much more physical type player. Lawson had a terrible game in the game at the shoe. He fouled out with six minutes to go and did not score. Fletch is open from the corner. First shot of the game, no good. Rebounded by Bargain. And Cordell Henry pushed by Kenyon Martin. First foul on Kenyon. Those are the type of fouls that Kenyon can't pick up. We have a break in the action with 15.53 left in the first half. Marquette up by a point early at 7-6, Eagles. Cordell Henry. Jermaine Tate took a seat during that last timeout, and Ace McGee is coming to the game. Bearcats being very physical down low. Wardle, who is a deadly three-point shooter, drills that one. And after the three-pointer, Bob Huggins looked toward Aaron McGee and held his hands up as if to say, you got to cover that guy. Levitt's open from three-point territory. Touche as the Bearcats pull back in front, 11-10, and Mike Dean is irate. Well, Mike Dean, he, as soon as he, he feels his guys breaking concentration, he gets a timeout. And he did the same thing in Cincinnati. Mel Levitt got off early, and he had two quick 20-second timeouts early in the game. He's done the same thing here to try and settle his guys down and get their concentration back in it. And welcome to the 1,000-point club, Mel Levitt. His first three-pointer of this ball game is good, giving him 1,002 career points. That was a deep one. <laughs> Mel playing with the uh, Band-Aid over his right eye, and. You can see where he ranks on the career three-pointer list at UC. He suffered that cut late in the DePaul game, and his eye was very puffy this morning. Seems to be a little bit better at game time. As long as the eye is still deadly, uh, <laughs> Melvin, he probably doesn't care much about the Band-Aid. Namaka for three. Fletch getting good position in front of Clawson to grab the rebound. Nice execution that time by Marquette, but wrong guy shooting the basketball. Gordon with a wild shot. Wardle has the rebound. Wardle faking the three. Now it's Clawson. Lost it momentarily. Gets it back. Has it stolen by Horton. Levitt for two. And Mel, looking good on the shot early, has seven points for UC. He's three for three from the floor. Mel Levitt getting off to a hot start here. And usually when Melvin's rolling, the Bearcats are rolling. 
Traveling called on Marquette. Cincinnati will get the ball, leading by three, 13-10. Well, Cincinnati has gone back to the full court pressure, trapping all over the court, and that's really, really that gets them into their flow, gets them easy baskets, and they need that because sometimes they have a tough time in the offensive set. Six turnovers for Marquette. Horton has had very active hands defensively. Logan has come into the game. Levin misses for the first time in the ball game. Michael hustles to the corner to get the rebound. And Logan will reset the Cincinnati offense. 13-30 left in the half. The Bearcats up by three. Kenyon Martin's jump shot. Knocked out of bounds by Bargain. Fletcher called for a foul trying to establish position. Kenyon right now 0 for 3 free throw line area shooting jumpers. He's got the quickness to lay it down on the floor and go by his man. He's got to exploit that, that weakness and, and attack Marquette. Aaron McGee is back in. Alvin Mitchell has checked into the game for the first time as Mel Levin will take a blow. Namaka recovers the ball and a foul is going to be called against Cincinnati. Alvin Mitchell gets called for a bump. I don't know how you could call make that call. Small guy like that can't affect a big big fella who's handling the basketball out there. I, I don't think either an advantage was gained by either player there. That should have been a no call. Craig Clawson heads to the bench. John Miller got off to a quick start, is back into the ball game. And John Cliff, number four, who provides instant offense off the bench, has come into the game for the first time has been hot of late, put up 23 against Louisville last time out, and scored 13 against UC, a guy who can score from all angles. He was five for six from three-point range against Louisville. Bearcats getting up into passing lanes, pressuring the ball, playing good, solid man-to-man -man defense. Wardle into the paint, elevates over McGee. The shot was no good, and Kenyon Martin has the rebound. Mitchell is open. Elected not to shoot. Good look inside to Fletch, who has it blocked by Bargain. Tied up by Fletch. And if that tie up was forced by Fletch, Cincinnati should get the ball. Well, they're calling that actually a loose ball. And so the arrow pointing towards Marquette's way. Marquette will get it. As you see Fletch posting up deep. But kind of rushed that shot right there if he would have taken his time. He let Bargain get in position that one, and that, that block was created simply by not knowing the guy was there. Bargain is 6'7". He's had as many as six blocks in a game this season. Henry for three, and he drills it. Cordell Henry, not much of an outside shooter, hits his first three-pointer tonight. Marquette looking very sharp here tonight. Good ball movement, good crisp ball movement on the offensive end. Freed up Cordell Henry for the nice open three. We're tied at 13 with 12 minutes left in the first half. Fletch inside. That time the ball slipped out of his hands. Fletch gets it back. Count the bucket and he'll go to the line to try for a three-point play. Fletch right now has the confidence going. He knows he can score inside. In the first offensive move, he, the ball just slipped out of his hand, but he stayed with it. Recovered the rebound, the loose rebound right there. Was patient and use that strength to guide that one in the basket and get the foul. Foul was on John Miller, his first. Fletch averaging a little less than seven points a game, but coming off the bench, he's averaging a dozen a game, and he makes the free throw, giving Cincinnati a three-point lead. 11.57 left in the first half. The score, the Bearcats 16, Marquette 13. Center, which is also the home of the Milwaukee Bucks. Seven uniform numbers have been retired in Bucks history. One you don't see is the number 33 for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. One we do see, the number one for Oscar Robertson. Probably could be arguably the best player that ever played the game. I mean, anytime you average a triple-double, I'm still amazed at that. 
Miller inside and he scores over Kenyon Martin. Six points for John Miller. We have a one point ball game. The Bearcats lead the Golden Eagles 16 to 15. Oscar Robertson spent the last four years of his NBA career playing here in Milwaukee. And he helped the Bucs to their one NBA championship in 1971. Kenyon Martin's jump hook is no good. And it's out of bounds off UC. Well, Kenyon getting off to a tough stop start right now. 0 for 4 from the field. And on the defensive end, not having his way as usual as Miller's just been taking the ball to him. Hargan is open for three. Shot no good. Melvin Levitt had a wide open win and lost control and knocked it out of bounds. He didn't have to jump. He just didn't realize it. Well, Mel just not really knowing where, where he is or who's around him. Didn't really have to lunge at that basketball like that. Could have just turned around and grabbed that one. Jermaine Tate back in. Ryan Fletcher heads for the bench. Cincinnati by a point with 11-13 left in the first half. This is Bart Miller. One of two Millers in the lineup at this moment for Marquette, although one is spelled as if it were Mueller. But it's pronounced Miller. And that's knocked out of bounds by the Mueller Miller. John Miller. <laughs> Awfully quiet at the bracket tonight. I must say I'm surprised by how small the crowd is. Yeah, you would think they would draw a lot more with the number fifth ranked team coming in, in their building. Horton missed the shot. Miller got the rebound, and in frustration, Horton committed the foul. He'll come out, Logan will come in. Well, Horton puts up a tough shot, and as, as he goes back, reaches down, and usually officials call that immediately the reach. If he had slapped up, he may have gotten away with that call. Horton has three assists and a couple of steals. Because of that foul, he heads to the bench. Miller misses the free throw. And Cincinnati has the ball with a one-point lead. Levitt elevates, double clutches. His shot's no good. Miller grabs another rebound and it bounds by UC. Right now, Bearcats not executing well offensively. They'll get into the pressure, the full court pressure to try and speed the game up, force some turnovers, and, and get some easy baskets. Bart Miller trying to break the pressure. Able to get it to Bargain. Now back to Bart Miller. Ten minutes left in the half, 16-15, you see. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Wardle in the paint, kicks it back to Miller. Two left on the shot clock. Clip shot is no good, and Levitt gets to the rebound. Good defense by the Bearcats right there, forcing a tough shot at the end of the shot clock. Tate backing in on Bargain, and he travels. Well, you see, they, they feel like they can exploit that matchup right there with Tate in the post against Bargain, they think they can exploit that. Right now, Tate hasn't really converted. Mike Dean's going to get some more height into the game as John Polanowski will check in shortly. Wardle, cross court to Cliff, nearly picked off by Michael. Now it is stolen by Levin as the turnovers continue to mount for Marquette. Logan into the paint, left-handed shot, up and in. Logan is extremely, extremely creative when he gets among the trees as he just accelerated in there and laid that one up with the left hand crossing the basket. Bart Miller caught tightly by Pete Michael. Bart Miller, by the way, is from Louisville. And this is Bart Miller driving to the basket. Kenyon Martin right there to knock it out of his hands. Well, the officials chose not to call that travel. I thought Bart Miller got away with the travel. Tate.
Back to Michael. Ball away jumper, good. And Cincinnati goes up by five, 20 to 15. Pete Michael with a little patience on the jumper. John Cliff with a quick answer just inside the line. That's a two-point bucket for John Cliff. Instant offense off the bench is John Cliff, and he comes in and he puts him up in a hurry. Cincinnati called for a violation on the inbounds pass, and the Bearcats will give the ball right back to Marquette. Bob Huggins shakes his head in disbelief. He'll bring three substitutes into the game, Alvin Mitchell, Gene Land, and Aaron McGee. Well, remember, Marquette's the only team to have beaten Cincinnati at least once each of the last three years. John Cliff fires away again. Balls loose on the floor. Clawson gets it back to Polinowski. That brings the fans to life here at the Bradley Center. Not many here, but they sure are loud. Marquette playing very well, and they usually do in this building. Bearcats had, had better stay on their game. Cordell Henry kicks it back to the three-point line. John Cliff into the paint. The shot was changed, and it goes out of bounds off Marquette. And we have a break in the action with 7.31 left in the half. The score, Cincinnati 20, Marquette 17. Showing the offensive skills that continue to earn him lots of playing time. Well, Steve Logan, like I said, very could you see, uses the basket and his left hand, goes to his offhand, and he can score amongst the trees at only six foot feet. Since arriving on campus, Steve Logan has dropped 27 pounds. They'd like him to lose maybe five more, but more significantly, they'd like him to reduce his body fat percentage a bit. Eugene Land misses, John Cliff with a rebound. Logan has 12% body fat. That's lower than average, even for an athlete. But on the UC team, he's the only player with more than 10%. They'd like him to get it down to nine. Always something, isn't it? <laughs> it's always something. Cordell Henry with a creative shot. It's no good. Alvin Mitchell with a rebound. And here comes Logan pushing it up the floor. Mitchell's open, takes the three. Good recovery by Wardle to get a hand in Mitchell's face. Mitchell is open this time. His three-point shot, no good. And McGee gets to the offensive rebound, tries to feed the cutting Michael, and Michael controls the pass in the corner. The whole Marquette staff not happy with that play. Nice-looking left-handed drive by Aaron McGee. Cincinnati goes back up by five, and Mike Dean calls another timeout. Well, Aaron McGee, nice use of the dribble, and that's, that's the play that I was looking for Kenyon to do. Aaron McGee takes him off the dribble. Big fella Clawson can't stay with him. He lays it down and uses the left hand going to his strong hand. That, that penetration is open for any big fella guarded by Clawson. Aaron McGee averaging about three points in eight minutes per game. He's had his moments so though. Very significant in the victory at Southern Miss. Got his best offensive game. Didn't play particularly well in the most recent game against DePaul. He got a lot of minutes as Bob Huggins was defense, and Aaron McGee did not provide many points. Well, that's something Aaron McGee can do is score. John Cliff for three. And the rebound is batted by Bargain to Mitchell. And Bargain hustles to deflect the ball out to uh, Wardle. And Marquette has it. Anytime you pick a pass off, you got to be aware of the traffic behind you. And that time, Mitchell got caught with his, uh, his, his eyes not behind him. <laughs> Wardle guarded by Gene Land into the paint. Tough shot, and it's good. Second bucket for Brian Wardle. He has a three and a two for five points. The Bearcats lead by three, 22-19. Marquette has shifted into a 2-3 zone. McGee comes up short, rebounded by Cordell Henry. Cliff. McGee goes down hard. No foul call. Now Eugene Land is hurting. And trainer Jade Grossman will come out to take a look. 
Looked like Land actually got hit by his teammate Aaron McGee as McGee was trying to draw the charge. He tumbled backward into Gene Land. You can't tell right now if he caught a shot in his leg. As you see the play right here, Aaron McGee takes the charge. And whoa, Aaron McGee rolls back on his, his left leg, his left. May have twisted his knee or ankle. Eugene is able to walk to the bench with the help of Jade Grossman, who will take a closer look. Ryan Fletcher has come into the ball game to replace Gene Land. Aaron McGee has also come out, and Kenny Martin is back in. Cats are only up by three. No foul as Bargain fell over backward after colliding with Fletch. Bargain is open, puts it on the floor, bounce pass to Miller. And a quick whistle, and it's ruled out of bounds off UC. Well, they ruled that, that Logan had his hands on the basketball while standing out of bounds, and so they gave it to Marquette. Levin and Horton check back in. And four of the five starters are on the floor for UC right now with Fletcher in for Tate. You know, Bob Huggins has got, has got the revolving door open. Lots of substitutions early in this game. Levin preventing Cliff from driving to his bargain into the paint. Shot comes up a bit short, rebounded by Fletch. Bargain made a nice move to get by Kenyon initially, then forced the shot. Pete Michael sticks the jump shot. Cincinnati goes back on top by five. Kenyon Martin limping a bit after that last collision under the hoop. John Miller, nice bank shot. Kenyon couldn't get there in time. Jermaine Tate will come in shortly. How about the half by John Miller? Eight points so far. He came into the game averaging less than two. Bob Huggins wants a 20-second timeout. I don't think Bob Huggins is real happy about this guy's giving up inside position to John Miller. He's He's been the offense for Marquette here so far. Miller, a 6'11 sophomore. He was originally a walk-on last year. Now he has a scholarship. When Miller was a high school freshman, he was only six feet cut by his high school team and was actually on the swimming team. Then between his freshman and sophomore years, he grew four inches, and they made him into a basketball player. Now he's 6'11". Must be something with chlorine. I, <laughs> I, never, I never swam that much as a youngster. Take a look at Eugene Land heading to the locker room. The good news that he is able to walk under his own power. Less than four minutes to go in the half. Cincinnati up by three. A lot of grabbing going on under the hoop. That's not going to bounce by Marquette. Tate literally had his jersey grabbed by a Marquette player going for the offensive rebound, and nothing was called. We have a timeout with 3.40. The youngest member of the Marquette cheerleading squad looking on here at the center. Cincinnati up by three with 3.41 left in the half. When these two teams meet, the games are typically ugly. That has been the case so far tonight. Neither team shooting well as we look at our fourth game summary. Melvin Levitt leading the Bearcats with seven points. John Miller has eight for Marquette. Yeah, low scoring ha half right here. Both teams just really getting after one another, and it usually turns into a physical brawl. We've seen bodies sprawled all over the place. Horton, nice movement into the paint to score. Second bucket of the game for Michael Horton. Cincinnati leads by five again, 26-21. Matching their biggest lead of the game. Marquette has led once by two. John Cliff guarded nicely by Horton. Bargain back to Cliff. He and Bargain play catch. 12 on the shot clock. Portal guarded by Kenyon Martin. With four seconds on the shot clock, Wardle misses, and Kenyon gets to the rebound. Also catches Wardle with an elbow. Levitt 
Throws up an air ball. Martin has the rebound. Kenyon scores his first bucket of the game. And Cincinnati has its biggest lead at 7, 28-21. Oh, as, as Levitt put that shot up, the whole Bearcat team got to the backside, and that's why they were able to get that rebound. Just outnumbered Marquette on the backside for that rebound. 2.30 left in the half. Cliff, double clutch shot, rolls out. Tate has the rebound and throws a bullet outlet pass to Michael Horton. It goes off his fingertips and out of bounds. Just in a hurry. Got in a hurry. Bob Huggins a little exasperated over there on the sideline. See Kenyon Martin's defensive ability able to guard Bargain, who's very good with the basketball on the dribble. Right now, Mark did have some trouble offensively. Wardle into the paint. Wardle scores. Third basket for Brian Wardle. Came in the game averaging 11 points. He has seven. Tate goes for the dunk. It's no good. Jermaine arguing for a foul, but he should have put the shot down anyway. That's, that's when you go with two hands. You go strong. You cock that one behind your head. You try and rip the basket off. Cincinnati up by five. Wardle with a fall away. In and out. Rebounded by Kenyon. Five boards for Kenyon Martin. Michael penetrates. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. John Cliff called for the foul, his first. Well, Cincinnati right now trying to take advantage of their quickness and get to the basket. As you see, Tate goes up. He may have gotten hacked, but on the road, you don't get those calls. You got to go with two hands strong. Michael, a 66% free throw shooter, makes the first, and as a result, provides a $50 donation to the Gift of Hope Challenge, thanks to Provident Bank and the Arthritis Foundation. It looks like Pete Michael has found his touch again, knocking down shots from the free throw line and from the field. And I had a conversation with him the last a couple of days ago, and I, I and we talked about his jump shot, and and I said, just go back to what you're comfortable with, what you what you normally do. And, and he it looks like he's done that. And he's starting to knock them down, not thinking about playing, just playing. Six points for Pete, whose mom is in attendance tonight here at the Bradley Center, making a short trip over from Rock Island, Illinois. Nice to see a big fella sit down in the stands and, and play solid defense. Kenyon Martin displaying that. Cordell Henry makes his second three-pointer. He came into the game hitting only 23% from three-point range. He's hit a couple of them in the first half tonight. I think that's been a surprise to the Bearcats. And I said if he could really knock down the jump shot, he'd be a heck of a player because he's got extreme quickness and can get to the paint. Great look by Horton, and Cincinnati draws the foul. Nice execution by the Bearcats, swinging the basketball around. Horton, a little bit of penetration, and finds Martin, gets hacked in the act. First foul on sophomore Brian Wardle. Kenyon Martin at the line. Kenyon a 53% free throw. First one tonight is good. Three points for the junior from Dallas. As Marquette coach Mike Dean works official Larry Lembo in hopes of getting a future call. Kenyon hits them both. And after missing their first two free throws tonight, the Cats have made five straight. Well, free throw shooting always an issue with the Bearcats. And now's the time to work on knocking them down as they will become critical when the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament begin. Cincinnati up by six. 12 seconds left in the first half. Wardle picked up by Martin. Now it's Bargain with seven seconds left on the clock. And a foul is going to be called against Jermaine Tate with 6.7, second and a half. That's a set defensive play by the Bearcats as, as Marquette runs the pick and roll. They'll fan the role player, which was Bargain, who, who's, excuse me, the picker, which was Bargain, and they fanned him. 
And that is set for Tate to rotate out and pick that pass off because they're going to double team the, the guy coming off the pick. So not good execution right there by Tate. And he picked up the foul on, on Bargain who took it to the basket. Bargain at the line, the only senior left on the Marquette roster this year. Jared Levette was with Marquette at the start of the season, but after playing in 11 ball games, he quit due to panic attacks and the case of depression. He's still here tonight. He's sitting on the Marquette bench, but he's no longer playing. Bearcats got 6.7 seconds to get off the shot here. Huggins putting in, putting in his offensive uh, 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 players, guys who can get up good shots and also quick guys. Everybody on the floor is pretty quick. Bargain makes both free throws. It's a four-point game. Horton to Logan. Yes! And a foul called on Marquette with 1.8 seconds remaining in the half. Bearcats doing a good job of rushing the basketball down the court and trying to get a quick one, an easy layup. And Horton is one of the best at rushing it down the court. He finds Logan who draws the foul. And Huggins will make substitution and get his big guys back in for defense. Logan is UC's best foul shooter. At the risk of jinxing him. Sure enough. Logan hitting 85% of his free throws this season. Never fails, does Never it? Never fails. <laughs> You'd think I'd learn not that until after the free throw. Second one good. Cincinnati up by five with 1.8 seconds remaining. A long pass for Cliff. Out of bounds. One second left. And the Bearcats are going to get the ball in the backcourt. I thought for a second that it might go back by the basket, but they're going to have to go a long way in one second. Well, Huggins will, Huggins will go with the home run play right here as they'll look to throw it in. I'm surprised he doesn't have Fletcher in the game inbounding the basketball. Kenyon Martin makes the catch, gets off the shot. It is no good, but a good try by Kenyon off the pass from Michael Horton. What a, a Bearcats. sloppy first half, but the Bearcats have the lead. Extremely sloppy. Both teams playing very physical. Bearcats getting a little, getting out in transition and getting some easy baskets, and that's really good. They're easy baskets. Our score at the half here at the Bradley Center. Cincinnati 33, Marquette 28. Turn the clock back to the end of Saturday's game at DePaul. The game obviously ended in disappointing fashion for the Bearcats, not only because they lost the ball game, but because of the call at the end of the ball game by official Paul Castor. Willie Coleman of DePaul tosses up a prayer with his back to the basket. Mel Levitt basically in the vicinity. Called for a foul with no time left. Coleman went to the line and hit a free throw to give DePaul the overtime. That call was the subject of a scathing article in today's edition of the Boston Globe written by columnist Bob Ryan. You can see the headline, officially this call outrageous. According to Bob Ryan, on a scale of 1 to 10 in injustice, this was at least an 11 and a half. And Basso went on to write, if some referee wants to know what not to do in an end of game situation, all he has to do is grab a tape of the, the DePaul Cincinnati game. It doesn't get any more ludicrous than that. Well, it, that, there were a lot of people that were that was outraged with that particular call. And, uh, you know, normally at the end of a game, especially if a player doesn't have any shot at making the basket, there's no whistle. So I, I, I was just as shocked as anyone in that, that stadium that night. Mel Levitt goes down hard. Pete Michael scores an easy bucket, and timeout is called for Levitt to get some medical attention. Michael now with 10 points for UC. In that article by Bob Ryan today, Hank Nichols, the NCAA's national coordinator of officials, was quoted saying, the guiding principle at the end of the game is to let the players do whatever they can to win the game without the officials' interference. And basically what did not happen at the end of overtime at DePaul. Yeah, that was clearly official interference. <laughs> <laughs> not that that's the reason why Cincinnati lost the game, but it should have gone to double OT. Absolutely. 
enough whining on our part. Cincinnati up by 7, 35, 28. Namaka fouled as he drives baseline. Namaka showing surprising quickness off the dribble, and I, I think that's what what caught Pete Michael uh, uh, off guard is the quickness going to the basket off the dribble, and, and Pete Michael wasn't ready for it. Second foul on Pete. Namaka picked up two early fouls and sat out most of the first half. Namaka played for the Swedish national team last year. His father is Nigerian, his mother is Swedish. Bargain's three-pointer is no good. Kenyon Martin taps the rebound to Alvin Mitchell, and Wardle is called for a foul as he takes the Mitchell. Official makes a gutsy call right there in front of Mike Dean. Marquette, as you see, Mitchell has it, and Wardle comes in and picks his pocket. I don't know if I make that call if I'm wearing the stripes. Look pretty clean, quite honestly. Cincinnati on top by seven. We played about one minute in the second half. And a call against Jermaine Tate of UC on the pick. Good call by Jim Burr right there, one of the top officials in college basketball. He got Tate with the moving pick as Tate was just moving, flailing around up there, and you can't do that. You got to get set when you're setting a pick. Number three on Tate. Cordell Henry brings it up the court. Levitt on now bargain, covered by Michael. Henry again. Henry does not like to go left. He almost always drives right. Namaka will go left. Bargain. Nice head fake, and Bargain scores. He got Kenyon Martin up into the rafters and then laid it in. Bargain is such a smart basketball player and fundamentally sound as he just penetrated in there under control, gave Martin head fake the score. Tate has his shot blocked by Bargain. Tate gets it back, tries to feed Kenyon Martin. Martin recovers. And the jump hook is no good. Levin taps it to Tate. And Tate is clearly fouled. It'll be on Bargain is first. Well, Bearcat staying after it under the, under the paint as Kenyon goes up, tries to create some room. So, shoots the jump hook short. Mel Levin in there on the glass. They they just staying after it. Tate's free throw no good. Jermaine with two points in the game. The junior from Toledo, the transfer from Ohio State, where he was the Buckeyes MVP as a freshman. This is them both. Miller has the rebound. Namaka with a good catch to prevent the turnover. Marquette had nine turnovers in the first half. I look for the offense to flow through their two better players out here on the court right now. Bargain and, and Wardle. Nine on the shot clock. Wardle. Tough shot. Barely draws iron. Michael in good position. Down. And Horton will push it up the floor. Horton draws a foul. As he took the ball right at the little guy, Cordell Henry. Well, it's not too many guys that that will be smaller than Horton. But Horton just takes this one almost all the way to the basket and goes in with his patented double clutch. Henry got him on the elbow before his shot was swatted. Horton gets the roll, and that means a $50 donation to the Gift of Hope Challenge, thanks to Provident Bank and the Arthritis Foundation. We call those crawlers. That one bounced up there, and then finally decided to crawl in the <laughs> basket. <laughs> Horton with five points in the game. And his second free throw is much better. Cincinnati back on top by seven, 37 30. But if Bearcats are caught off the full court pressure by Horton, ahead to Levitt. Jump ball is the call. And the Golden Eagles will get it. And maintain possession. As you see, Horton, nice 
Nice anticipation to poke it loose and can you, just as you can see Melvin that time he should have probably taken one more dribble and, and give it this give it the spin move back to the inside for the easy layup try to use his athletic ability and got stuck. 1655 left in the game. Cliff guarded by Michael. Namaka trying to go by Fletcher. Elevates for the shot. It is good. Count the bucket. The foul is on Fletcher. Now Fletcher moves in with the hips. And Namaka fades on him and shoots the jumper. As you see, gets penetration and then he fades. Drops that one in. Nice move. Second foul on Fletch. Namaka. Unable to complete the three-point play. Mel Levitt has the board for Cincinnati. Wow, well, surprising. Mueller's been, been all over the Cincinnati uh, players' backs. Going for rebounds, and he just grabbed Mel Levitt, and there was no call. Cats lead by five, 37-32. Kenyon Martin shoots, he's had a cold shooting night. That's out of bounds off Kenyon. Kenyon's one for seven from the floor. Well, Kenyon is settling for the jump shot, and, and he really could just face up and go by his man, but he's just not putting the basketball on the floor to, to use that move. He needs to utilize his quickness when he's in the post. Cliff gets it to Wardle. The shot is good. Ryan Wardle with nine points. He had 13 in the first game against UC. And we have a three-point ball game, 37-34. Well, credit that to John Mueller, Miller as he got over and set the screen to prevent it. Melvin Levitt from getting back to Wardle. Levitt with a tough turnaround, a bad shot. And we have a whistle underneath and a foul against Marquette. Well, Mel Levitt tried to turn back to his strong hand when he had the, actually he had the move going inside, kind of faked himself out. And a timeout with 15-31 left in the ball game. Cincinnati in a war at Marquette to score the Bearcats 30, Golden Eagles 34. Would Nikki have won? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, it'd be hard for him to leave. You know. I'd, I'd be acting, I'd be a freaking maniac up in there right now. <laughs> They're just waving pom-poms, jumping around, you know, I'd be going crazy. There we go. today the Bearcats came by the Bradley Center for a brief workout and when they arrived the Milwaukee Bucks were wrapping up an afternoon practice we ran into former Xavier star Tyrone Hill now in his second year with the Bucks and asked him about rumors that Skip Prosser could be headed to the University of Pittsburgh uh, it would be hard for him you know as good as Cincinnati's been good to him and he you hopes know, they give him another contract or an extension or whatever he deserves it you know I think he should be one of the high paid coaches in the Atlanta 10 he asked me um, you know he did a lot for me when I was at Xavier so I hope it works out for him pretty good 
Coming out of the timeout, Ryan Fletcher hits the turnaround for UC, so the Bearcats are back up by five, 39-34. Five points for Fletch. Pete Michael leads the Bearcats with 10. Wardle knocks down Levitt. And it's an offensive foul. Number three on Brian Wardle. Well, Wardle, I think what the official call was the was the arm. You see the elbow right there as he pushes off. And that's what the official got. If Wardle would have just kept the arm in, he made a nice move. He could have stopped and pulled up for the jumper. What Marquette is doing is they're spreading the Bearcats out and they're using their ability to penetrate and get by the Bearcats. And so far it's worked. It's kept them close in this game. Nice look inside to Fletch. No offensive goaltending call there, or defensive goaltending, I should say, on Marquette. It looked pretty obvious from this vantage point. Kenyon Martin with his first rejection of the ball game. Cliff gets it back for Marquette. Horton is hurt. He got poked in the face. Miller knocks down Kenyon. Blocking is called by official Kerry Sitton. And the basket should count. I don't know if Sitton's aware that the ball went in. I think it was tipped in by, by someone else as you get okay. it. Look at Kenyon rejecting that one. And Horton getting hit in the face going after the loose ball. Miller has two free throws. The first one is good, giving him nine points in the game. Aaron McGee is back. Steve Logan is also back in. Michael Horton and Kenyon Martin head to the bench. Foul on Kenyon was his second. Miller makes both free throws, putting him in double figures. Well, Cincinnati by three. Both teams have called off the press, content to go back and sit in, in their half-court defense. Bearcats showing a little patience here. Look for Ryan Fletcher. Fletch drills the jump shot as Miller was late to recover. Fletcher getting hot again. He has seven points. Steve Logan doing a good job of making sure the Bearcats get set in their offense. Made sure that Fletcher got the basketball where he wanted it to knock down the jump. Cincinnati by five, 41-36. Namaka, sloppy pass, Wardle into the paint. Levitt recovers quickly. Eight on the shot clock. Wardle, tough shot, air ball, rebounded by Fletcher. Well, Wardle is taking it upon himself to try and take Mel Levy to school. So far, Mel Levy, good defense on two occasions. Fletch drills another jumper just inside the three-point line. Third jump shot of the second half for Fletch, who has nine points, and the Cats lead by seven. Well, Fletch, when he gets the feeling it from the outside, he can knock him down, and, and he's consistently shown that he can shoot the J, and that's got to be refreshing for the Bearcats. Cliff for three. Cliff has been ice cold in this ball game. He is one for eight. Well, you know the ice is still down. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> under the floor. <laughs> exactly. The minor league hockey team, the Admirals, that plays in this facility. Cliff is more of his threes in the game. Ace McGee, turnaround shot. And it's knocked out of bounds by Ryan Fletcher. Not a good looking move right there from Ace McGee. As he didn't take the contact too well and kind of lost it going up. Looked like he was going to attempt a left handed jump hook. Alvin Mitchell is in. Mel Levin will catch some rest. Cincinnati's substitution situation and system is a little bit different from other teams. Obviously, there are situations where Bob Huggins will yank a player out of the lineup when he sees something he doesn't like. But to encourage players to play hard at all times, Cincinnati's players are also allowed to take themselves out of ball games. Shot missed by Mitchell, rebounded by Cliff. And the trade-off is that if you take yourself out of a game because you're tired, you are allowed to put yourself back in when you are well-rested. And again, that is to encourage players to go as hard as they can for as long as they can without being punished. Cliff travels, and Cincinnati will get the ball. Well, Cliff made a nice move to the baseline, just lost his footing on the spin move. That call for traveling. 
looks like Marquette is going to try and use their one-on-one -on -one abilities against UC. Maybe they've seen something uh, that they can exploit as far as on-the-ball defense. 13th turnover for the Golden Eagles. Cincinnati only with seven. Cats lead by seven, 43-36. Roughly 12 minutes to go. Let's see if the Bearcats can't try and get something with Ryan Fletcher. Miller called for holding Fletcher. That's the third foul on sophomore John Miller, a biomedical engineering major from the Milwaukee area. Well, knocking down the jump shot opens up the ability to, to get to the basket now, and Ryan Fletcher doing a good job of taking advantage of the guy being too close to him and landing on the floor. Miller heads to the bench as Mike Dean has gone to a small lineup. He brings in six foot two John Cliff and pulls out six foot eleven John Miller. Fletch has to kick it back to Logan. Good defense by Namika who got his hand on the basketball as Fletch was attempting his shot. Fletch guarded by Namika, backing in on Namika. Three seconds called on either Pete Michael or Aaron McGee. And there's a timeout with 11.47 left in this game. It's still close. Cincinnati by seven with 11.47 left. One player we will not see again in this game is Eugene Land. He left in the first half after twisting his right knee. You can see the knee is wrapped. He has the warm-ups on, and he will not be back. Another player we have not seen at all tonight and will not see is Sean Myrick. Sean take this road trip. According to Bob Huggins, he did not practice well enough to warrant making the trip. Well, Huggins tightened up the reins. Wants to get his guys focused as the, the home stretch comes. Namaka with a wild shot that goes. Second basket for Aloma Namaka, known as O to his teammates. He had O in the points column in the first half, but he's hit a couple of buckets in the second. Again, penetration. Marquette doing a very good job so far of just spreading the Bearcats out and penetrating. Because they're spread out, the help defense is now taken out of the pitcher. Kenyon Martin with an obvious foul. He was frustrated that he couldn't get the ball in the low post, and he just whipped a wild elbow to pick up his third foul. And that's really inexcusable. Way too important to this team to get frustrated and just start throwing elbows. Well, Kenyon, he, he, he's been susceptible to that because guys are now playing him a little bit more physical and, and, and making it tough on him. And he's getting frustrated extremely easy. We, we talked about that and, and we said too important. You've got to quit getting silly fouls. Absolutely. And uh, he's not a freshman, he's a junior. Arguably the most valuable guy on the team, and that simply cannot happen. Bargain with a great fake to score, and it's a three-point game again. Cincinnati 43, Marquette 40. Well, Coach Huggins wants to charge, but Ryan Fletcher was right under the basket. And see, in the NBA, they put that dotted line around the basket. If you're in there, they will not call the charge. And that time, that's where Fletcher was, so there was no charge call. The freshman Logan takes the big shot. It's no bounded by Wardle. Wow. Marquette could tie it with a three. Crowd getting back in the game. For the tie. The battle on for the rebound. Namaka has it. 9.53 left in the game. Cincinnati by three. Wardle scores, and it's a one-point ball game. This is the closest Marquette has been since it was 16-15 with about 12 minutes to go in the first half. Cincinnati needs and calls a timeout. Well, Huggins not happy with his guy's effort right now. As you get a look, Mel Levitt tries to take the charge. And Wardle just puts a nice little spin fade right there on the baseline. He's tried that shot a couple of times. Nice, nice use of the shoulder to create some space for himself, and he knocks down the fade jump shot. He's been very good on the post against the Bearcats. And once again, 
They've all indications that this game is going to be decided down the stretch. The Bearcats up by one with 9.35 to go. Cincinnati led by 11 with less than six minutes to go at DePaul and could not protect that lead. This one's going inside to, to Fletcher. Fletcher's got a mismatch. Covered by Bargain. Fletch scores! Fletch with three points in the first half and eight here in the second. Marquette really doesn't have an answer for Ryan Fletcher in the post. He's, he's got the ability to lay it on the floor against bigger guys. Marquette answers inside with a bucket. Namika with the nice move down low. As he posts up close to the basket, it becomes an easy layup. The Bearcats up by one, six points for Namika. Fletch again, covered by Bargain. Fletch, a little bit deeper this time. Cliff has the rebound, stolen by Fletcher. And the bank shot is good. Fletch with 13 points. Staying after it, that's what Fletch, he knew he took a bad shot the first time because he can just post up Barton and make his move with his back to the basket instead of stepping out. Wardle covered by McGee. Slightly more than eight minutes left in the game. 47-44, UC. Namaka loses it out of bounds as Wardle let him a bit. Take another look at Ryan Fletcher. Well, Ryan Fletcher picks off the... Gets his hand in there and picks it off. One dribble and up with the jump shot. Shooting it nicely and playing, playing pretty hard and staying after it. And that's what you got to do when you're on the road in a tough game. This is the eighth consecutive game in which Fletch has come off the bench instead of being in the starting lineup. He's been in double figures in seven of those eight games. Ace McGee whips up an air ball. Pete Michael with the offensive rebound. And Pete comes up big and scores, giving him a dozen points. The lead is back to five, 49-44. Well, the Bearcats sensing the, they have a sense of urgency on the offensive end. Stepped it up. Wardle blocked by Jermaine Tate. Melvin Levitt's hurt. Mel is holding his left ankle. And once again, trainer Jay Grossman run out to take a look. We'll take a timeout with 7.25 left in this game. Cincinnati leads by five, 49-44. Tries to catch up to Wardle. Ouch. That's what we call rolling it right there. He rolled his ankle. And it's, it's doubtful if we'll see Mel the rest of this game. He has not put any pressure on it as he is helped by two people to the Cincinnati bench. He'll be replaced in the lineup by Alvin Mitchell. Fortin and Mitchell are the guards. Michael and McGee are the forwards. Jermaine Tate is in the middle. 7.25 left with Cincinnati leading by five points. Very interesting strategy being employed by Mike Dean's club as they're spreading the Bearcats out and using ability to penetrate. Namaka for three. Namaka gets his own rebound. His shot's no good. Bargain has the rebound for Marquette. Two offensive boards in this sequence. Wardle for three. And it's a two-point ball game, 49-47. Well, what the spread offense does is, if you can now penetrate, the defense is so scared of the shooters, you got lanes to penetrate. But once you suck in the... The defenders, now you've got the outside shot available. Michael inside, blocked cleanly by Marquette. McGee gets it for UC and loses it to Henry. Wardle to the corner to Cliff. A two-pointer would tie it, a three would give Marquette the lead. Wardle's got the mismatch. He'll look to take Tate off the dribble. Nice bounce pass to Bargain. His shot ties the ball game at 40. 10 points for Bargain. Right now, the Bearcats are not playing tough on the offensive end. They're on the road. They're not going to get a lot of calls. So you got to stay tough mentally. Horton shoots. No good. Bargain rebounds for Marquette. 
Marquette with the ball in a tie ball game. 551 left. And the fans are standing here at the Bradley Center. Namaka guarded by McGee. Bargain is open. Now it's Wardle for three. In and out and rebounded by Michael. Had a good look at it. Marquette executing very well, getting the shots that they want. Bearcats, on the other hand, are not. Bearcats are trying to play one-on-one -on -one basketball. No semblance of an offensive set. And that's why they're having such a time in the half-court set. Can't really score unless they've got full-court pressure and getting some easy baskets. So far, that's hurt them in this game. We'll see the bucket by Bargain that tied the ball game for Marquette. Well, nice penetration right there by Wardle, and he found his buddy for the reverse layup. And that's that's really what they've done. They've spread the Bearcats out, they've penetrated, and now they're looking to dish or score. And once you get the Bearcats now inside, freeze yourself up for a jump shot. Interesting, like I said, interesting uh, uh, strategy being employed by Marquette. 527 left. Cincinnati and Marquette tied at 49. Mel Levitt has his left shoe off and an ice pack on his left foot. Does not appear that he'll be able to come back in the ball game. Eugene Land is unavailable. His right knee is taped up. Sean even here after being left at home after practicing poorly. So the Bearcats are bandaged and bruised. And uh, in Potential trouble at Marquette. Well, Huggins has now inserted Ryan Fletcher, and again, it look like he'll, he'll use Ryan Fletcher to try and ride the big fella through this storm. And hopefully he can come up with numbers and the same type of performance that he put on against DePaul. And hopefully they'll get some different results. You want to take a guess at what his major is? And his GPA. <laughs> well, Cincinnati getting production off the bench, most notably the performance of Ryan Fletcher, who has 13 of those 20 bench points. Fletch is back in. Kenyon Martin is back in with three fouls. Bearcats with the ball in a tie game. This one's going to Fletch inside. Logan for three. Kenyon Martin gets the offensive rebound. Fletch. And Kenyon Martin's going to be called for his fourth foul. Not much contact, but Larry Lembo is ready to make a call. And he calls Kenyon Martin for his fourth foul. That's tough right there. Kenyon working really hard trying to get to the backside. And he, he was holding. He tried to tried to hide it, but he was holding. And the Bearcats are unable to get Kenyon out immediately, so he will play for at least one possession with four fouls. Jermaine Tate is ready to check back in. So you're not happy with that. You're not you're not angry with that there, but it's it's the silly fouls that now puts Martin in trouble. Right. That third foul, the elbow, when he was frustrated, is going to mean he's going to be out of this game in important minutes. Bargain, tough shot. Offensive rebound for Namaka. Horton comes up with a steal for UC. 4.22 left in the game. Bearcats trying to pull back in front. They're going to run a play here to get, get either Fletcher coming off down low or Logan for the three-point shot. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Gordon wants to run the offense. Six left on the shot clock. Nice lift to Fletch, and Fletch is half. They didn't get either option with, with Logan or Fletcher down low, so the offense broke down. You, you get Gordon resetting it. Fake screen. Finds Fletcher rolling to the basket. Good foul on Mike Bargain, because Fletch would have had a layup. Second foul on Bargain. Fletch with 13 points, 10 in the second half. And he gets the roll, giving Cincinnati a 50-49 lead. 
Kenyon Martin will now come out with four fouls. Jermaine Tate is back in. Well, Fletch, right now, the only guy, Fletch and Logan, excuse me, those two guys are the only ones that seem like they really, really want their hands on the basketball and the offensive end to take the big shot. Fletch made the first, misses the second. Namaka with a rebound for Marquette. 50 49, less than four minutes to go. Look for Bargain or Wardle to create something as they spread the Bearcats out. This is Bargain, and this is Wardle. Michael defends. Ten on the shot clock. Wardle, tough turnaround. No good. Bargain goes over Logan to get the offensive rebound, and Marquette is killing UC on the board. Bargain's three is no good, and Horton gets to that rebound. Well, Bargain's got a mismatch on the offensive end because he's got a shorter guy defending him, so if he can work himself in position for rebounds, he should be able to beat the glass up. Cincinnati by one with 3.10 left. Logan loses it inside, but it's out of bounds off Marquette. Marquette faithful want to travel. They thought Logan got away with the travel. But again, Logan moving without the basketball, trying to get himself free. He and Fletcher are the only two guys that look that are looking to attack the basket offensively. Horton to inbound, 17 on the shot clock. And a foul is called on Marquette. Larry Lembo is not the nearest official, but he calls the foul on Brian Wardle, his fourth. They got Horton trying to post up, and, and, and that was a good call. Good call by Larry Limbo right there as Bargain got his hand right down on Horton to prevent the layup. That was a foul. Good call by Larry Limbo. And it was Bargain, not Wardle, so it's the third foul on Bargain instead of the fourth on Wardle. Horton misses the first free throw. That ended up being a good foul, though, by, by Bargain. Gordon did unable to convert from free throw line, and that's what you got to do in close ball games. Michael's two for five from the stripe in this game. And he's able to make the second, giving Cincinnati a two-point lead at 51 to 40. Mike Dean calls a timeout, and we'll take one too. 258 left. In a thriller in Milwaukee, the score, Cincinnati 51, Marquette 49. Okay. In the tunnel. these two teams meet you rarely have a game in the 70s although these two guys are in the 70s <laughs> nice pros Melvin Levitt out of the game with an injured ankle is trying to test it to see if he'd be able to come back with 258 left in this game not moving very well on that injured ankle though although now he's coming back to the court and looking a bit better the ankle is obviously taped Levitt is walking up toward Bob Huggins, and it looks like he's giving him the signal that if he wants to put him in, he's willing to test it. Well, the problem is he'll have problems changing directions, but as far as going straight ahead, he, he shouldn't have any problem. Looks like Marquette's laying some screens on the baseline. They'll try and get, get Ward or the ball. The slip takes it. Terrible shot by Marquette. Down by two at less than three minutes to go. You see with the ball. Logan. Blocked from behind by Bargain. Not the play you want, this juncture in the game. Bargain lays it up and in to tie the score at 51. 12 points for senior Mike Bargain. For Cincinnati, Ryan Fletcher needs to have the basketball. Down on the block. For Marquette on the other end, Wardle or Bar Those guys need to make their move. Michael with a beautiful drive giving Cincinnati a 53-51 lead. Where have you been, Pete Michael? Pete Michael shows up the big way as he blows by his man to get an easy layup. 14 points for Pete Michael. 143 left in the game. You see by two. Bargain. 
to Wardle. Wardle for the lead. Marquette leads by one. Marquette's first lead since the score was 10-8. Well, Wardle, nice use of the hesitation dribble, and he kind of lulled Fletcher to sleep, knocked it down. One ten left in the game. Fletcher backing in on Namaka, shoots, misses, and a foul is called on Marquette. Namaka can't handle Fletcher down on the post as he uses the spin move. Gives him a little up and under, and ducks under. He just left it a little short. But he was hacked in the act. Fletch will try to make some money for the Gift of Hope Challenge. Every free throw means a $50 donation, thanks to Provident Bank and the Arthritis Foundation. More importantly, he's trying to tie the score, and his first free throw is no good. Well, Fletcher's, when the game is kind of in a flow, he, he's okay. But when you put him up there at the free throw line, he struggles. Second shot is good, tying the score at 54. Fletch will go out for defensive purposes as Kenyon Martin checks in. 15 points for Ryan Fletcher to lead the Bearcats. Uh, Coach Huggins worried about Wardle. He's now put Horton on, and Kenyon is guarding Bargain, so he's taking his two best defenders and put them on Marquette's two best offensive players. Less than a minute to go in the game. We're tied at 54. 14 on the shot clock for Marquette. Namaka into the paint. Puts up the shot. Rejected late by Kenyon Martin. If that's goaltending, Marquette will take a two-point lead. It will be goaltending. They're going to give it to, to Marquette. Larry Limbo out top. Yes, sir. Goaltending called on Kenyon Martin. A critical mistake by UC. Well, take breaks down defensively, and the Bearcats get inside. And in that, that time, you can't let the, the offensive player get the shot up. Got to tie him up, not let him get the shot up. And there never would have been an opportunity for a goaltending. Namaka completes the three-point play. The Bearcats down by three with 39.5 seconds to go. UC calls a timeout, and we'll take a break with 35.4 seconds remaining. The score, Marquette 57, Cincinnati 54. for three or go for two. Well, if, if he inserts, I, I don't think he can insert Mel Levin because he doesn't you know, look like he's going yeah, to. It's tough. Hey, it looked like... Thirty-five point four seconds left. Cincinnati down by three on the road. The Bearcats have the ball, and as we take a quick look at the Ford game summary, as Ryan Fletcher listens to instructions from Bob Huggins, Fletch leading the Bearcats with 15 points. You see getting good production off the bench, but Marquette coming up big down the stretch to take this three-point lead. Well, Marquette has done a great job of, of exploiting UC's inability to, to guard on the basketball. And, and they spread them out, penetrated, and kicked out for threes, or just taking UC off the dribble. And that's been a big, the big difference for Marquette. Go for three or go for two here? I think there's enough time to go for two. Go inside to Fletcher for two. Logan from the three-point line for the tie. His shot is no good and goes over the backboard, giving Marquette the ball with 23 points remaining. Got a foul quickly. Levitt and Tate will come in. Levitt noticeably limping. Cincinnati does not want to foul Wardle. 
The best free throw shooter, Marquette, wisely gets it to Wardle, and he is the guy who is half. A 78% free throw shooter, although Brian has not attempted one so far tonight. Well, there's still plenty of time left. The Bearcats now need to knock down the three. If Wardle makes both free throws here. Cincinnati in danger of losing two straight for the first time in four years. Levitt's ankle is not good enough to continue playing. He comes out of the ball game. That's it, guys. Hold your spot. That's it. This is a one and one for Wardle. And he hits it. He'll get another. He's given his team a four-point lead. 18 points for Brian Wardle. Bearcats will have to get down the court quickly, get into their offense quickly, and either go inside or put up the three. Wardle hits them both. Horton races up the court. Gets it to Kenyon Martin, who scores. The Bearcats call timeout with 17.4 seconds left. They have cut it to three. The Bearcats will now front in the, the inbounds. They'll try and get a steal off the inbounds play right here. If not a quick foul, hopefully not Wardle. They'll force, they want to force Marquette to shoot free throws and then try and rush the ball down again. And, and if it's a three-point situation, they can go for two. As you can see, Port pushes it down pretty quickly and Martin right in front of the basket for an easy two and quick timeout. Marquette was able to inbound to Wardle, the person that they want to get the ball to in order to send him to the line. They're going to they're going to try and get Wardle the basketball because he's the best free throw shooter. But watch watch for someone breaking long. Marquette gets it to Wardle again. 14 seconds left as Henry races up the court. He's hacked by Pete Michael. Henry is a good person to foul. He's one of two from the line in this game. And he is a freshman. See if he can deliver in the clutch with Marquette leading 59-56. Well, Bob Huggins getting in, putting in Mitchell for three-point shooting. Kind of surprised he took Logan out. At least he'd have two guys in there that could knock down a three. But don't forget, Fletcher can shoot the three. Made one against, against DePaul. Again, this is a one-and-one one opportunity for Henry. He needs to make the first to get a second. His shot. Good! And it's a two-possession game. Marquette on top, 60-56. to 56. Oh, Henry very confident in that one. Put that one up like it was going in all the way. He drills them both. Nine points for Henry. Martin up court, loses it momentarily, dunks with 10.5 left. It's a three-point game again, 61-58. Namaka, and he'll be fouled by Kenyon Martin. That is team foul number, so Namaka will get two shots. That's Kenyon Martin's fifth foul. He's out of the game. Bob Huggins will take this opportunity to huddle everybody as he makes the substitution for Kenyon, who has just fouled out. Namaka is a 57% free throw shooter. He's one for two in this game. Well, he's got two shots. That usually makes the situation a little easier. All he needs to do is make one, and it's a two-possession game. So far, the Bearcats have scored in a hurry both times down. Look, look, look for the Bearcats now. If he makes both of them. They've got to attempt a three and, and hopefully knock it down and get a foul after the, after the inbound. One free throw by Namaka would make it awfully difficult for Cincinnati to force OT. He misses the first. Blockout's important right here. 9.1 seconds left. The Bearcats can get a good look at the three. He's got two good shooters in, and Count Fletcher, he's the third. Namaka drills the second. The difference is four. Seven seconds left. Logan with four seconds left. 
Misses the shot. Bargain with the rebound. Marquette upset Cincinnati here at the Bradley Center. And here they come on the floor. Bearcats just unable to maintain the lead, and that's kind of been their problem in their three losses. Is once they get the lead, they just can't hang on to the lead. For the fourth consecutive year, the Marquette Golden Eagles have defeated the Cincinnati Bearcats. The crowd going crazy. They floor. Every time Bearcats lose, this is exactly what happens. Fans are going to enjoy this one. Bearcats dropped two in a row for the first time since four years ago. Yep, when the Bearcats lost three in a row, and that number one seed in the NCAA tournament is becoming less and less likely as the Bearcats fall to 21 and three. There's still a big fight for the conference tournament also the conference that that number one seed and the Bearcats have now put themselves right back in the thick of this race. Our Cincinnati Bearcat Dodge player of the game tonight from the Bradley Center. Junior Ryan Fletcher who came off the bench to keep Cincinnati in it offensively Fletch finished the game with 15 points. Up next, the 10 o'clock news with Jack Atherton and Gina Germani. Greg Horde will have a wrap-up of tonight's game in sports. Our next telecast day, Valentine's Day, as the UC women's team will take on Louisville. We'll have all the action beginning at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Then next Wednesday, it's the rematch between UNC Charlotte and UC as the Bearcats look to avenge their loss at Charlotte. Tip-off at 8 here on Fox 19. Again, our final score, Marquette 62, Cincinnati 58. For Anthony Buford, I'm Dan Horde. Thanks for watching, and so long from Milwaukee.